It's an interesting question to consider how well pharma is driving innovation or is innovation driving pharma. Um, pharma is certainly in the midst of transition. Business models are getting disrupted. The ways of the past aren't going to be the ways of the future. Well, I think pharma is trying to drive innovation, uh, particularly in their R&D sections, as well as uh, information systems and uh, customer-focused initiatives. Uh, there's a lot of effort and interest in driving innovation today but I think we're just at the beginning of the process. If you look at some of the more um, innovative behavioral modification programs that many pharmaceutical companies now offer as um, supplement to their medications, uh, that's a way to treat not only the uh, medical side of the condition, but also the psychological and social side of the condition. Um, I also think that the pharmaceutical company is innovating in terms of how it's reaching and engaging its customers, whether those are healthcare providers, patients, or payers. I think a lot of pharma companies are still uh, mired in the mindset of waiting for the big drug that's going to save them. Uh, I think they're obligated by virtue of having failed at that and having their pipelines dry, dry up to move forward in, in a different kind of thinking. But again, some companies have, have come to understand that they need to broaden their scope where others are continuing to lag behind because they're still adhering to that model of the, the single drug. Uh, but the successful companies have recognized that one single blockbuster drug is the way of the past and not of the future. And so the biggest innovation challenge for pharma is that historically innovation was something you only did in the lab. And Across the world, I'm seeing companies trying to move innovation not only in the lab, but out of it, across the entire organization. And it's like this massive invisible barrier that people for decades who have not been asked to get new ideas all of a sudden are expected to. And that's the challenge. And those companies that are figuring that out are the ones who are driving the innovation in the entire pharma system. So the biggest challenge is, I think, for Pharma in, in adopting innovative approaches is first of all to kind of overcome our internal inertia which oftentimes blocks um, our thinking and trying to open our minds a little bit more about seeing things from the customer perspective from especially from the patient experience. The blocks in the commercial process in, de in delivering innovation to the marketplace within pharma is pharma itself. It's getting in its own way. Um, I've been in the industry for more than 25 years and they're doing things basically the same way they did when I entered the industry 25 years ago. However, healthcare has changed immensely. Pharma faces several challenges um, as it tries to innovate. I think that the um, regulatory environment can be constraining. Now, one can view that as a challenge, but it's also um, an opportunity to think about how do we reach and engage customers in a transparent and honest and meaningful way while um, staying true to the pharmaceutical guidelines. The biggest blocks to innovation in pharma are really the pictures we hold inside of our heads of how we get new ideas within pharma. It's a similar issue where R&D historically has been the source of all new ideas and even senior executives in many pharma companies don't see themselves as innovative idea resource people. That's somebody else's job. We have to change how we're doing things. Other industries have recognized this change and they have moved on. Pharma gets in its own way and keeps doing things in a very conservative, traditional manner, but the world's moved on. Put the patient at the center of how you do business. Every decision should be made with the patient in mind, period. As long as you do that, the prescriptions will follow. Everything has to have um, value to the patient. You can't get into the doctor's office without bringing value to the patient. If you are able to bring value to the patient, you can have a better relationship with payers, as well as looking at the community where the patient lives. I mean, that's where they are most of the time. Everything should be about the patient. The uh, commercial models need to adapt to different business models to understand that there are other opportunities beyond the traditional uh, marketing of, of uh, big drugs. Pharmaceutical companies need to do more than pay lip service to being customer centric. I think they actually have to organize themselves internally to deliver on that promise. And I think that means um, moving away from you know products silos and moving towards 
customer-centered teams that are really putting the customer first, understanding their needs, and understanding what they can credibly offer that will meet those needs. The technology solutions that we see being innovated to move forward with the, uh, the, the strategies we have are really around the uh, handheld and portable devices. These devices are easy at reach, people can use them from you know, their bedside. Uh, the interaction becomes a lot quicker and easier for people to reach out to us through those, uh, those technologies. Any technology that allows our clients to more accurately pinpoint who their best customers are will be at the forefront of any technology that moves this industry. The challenge for them has and, and will continue to be to identify those customers that are most used to them and allow them to reach them most effectively. One of the most um, interesting things I've learned today about the future of pharma marketing is this notion of the third place. I think a lot of people are talking about patient-centered healthcare, and that's been a trend for a couple of years now. But putting it in the context of, say, a Starbucks and what they were able to create in terms of a, an experience where everything is right there for you. Some of the biggest healthcare problems we have in the world require more than just a pill to fix. Take a simple thing like diabetes and insulin. We know the world over that insulin is part of the treatment, but it's a piece. There are lifestyle issues, social issues, family issues that make all kinds of an impact on people trying to get healthier and better. And so the biggest innovation that needs to happen within pharma is to realize that they are a simple, singular piece of the puzzle. And if they could extend themselves beyond their, their, their drug, for example, that there's a bigger picture here. And if they can figure out ways to pull together the scientists who are making those incredible drugs with the other folks who understand the social context of how they're being used and put that group of people together in ways that they've never done before, that's the kind of collaboration across areas within a company or even across companies that will solve some of these deeply difficult healthcare problems that need solutions, but it's bigger than just a simple pharma solution. Ultimately, technology will continue to push changes in behavior of their customers, and that pharma will be obligated to succeed and to survive to finally start approaching innovation more actively. But I still believe that there will continue to be a bell curve of some that are willing to experiment and be risky and others that will take a more conservative route. So a company who's really thinking to be innovative, do they buy, build, or buddy to get to where they need to go to, to be effective in the future? They do all three. They're gonna have to buy the right types of services, the right types of mm, companies to partner with, and that goes to budding with the right alliance partners and building it from the inside based on the people that they have. So I say all three. We actually see a lot of this change through the new players that are coming into the pharma industry or the, the, uh, the medical industry where we have Samsungs and uh, uh, Apple and these companies that are developing technologies or strategies to be able to assist and move in that direction. So it's no longer just the pharma companies or the medical devices that are developing. We actually have all these partners, if you want, that are developing technology that they're feeding to the pharma companies and to the medical environment to be able to accelerate that entire process. For patients to be able to proactively manage their care, be their greatest advocate, and get all of the information and services and support they need um, without having to rely on the hospital system or the physician system as the sole um, delivery of that um, it is really an exciting future that I, I, I hadn't thought of. In terms of where we are uh, in this continuum of how healthcare is evolving, I think right now is a huge opportunity because if we don't take this opportunity now, we're not going to be there in the future. Uh, with kiosks and with um, healthcare delivery taking place in so many non-traditional areas in the future, um, we are we're in middle days, I think, because other industries see this opportunity. And if we don't take control of it, or at least take advantage of it, and what we already know now, we're going to lose our space quickly. Mm -hmm.